everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. If you're new to my channel, I garden here in South Buckinghamshire in the UK um, in an English country garden. It's equivalent to a zone 8A in the States. So today I'm making a video about the entire process of digging and storing our dahlias. So it's actually going to be one video, but it'll span a couple of days because when we dig our dahlias, we then have to leave them to dry a bit before we put them away for storage. So you might be wondering whether you need to dig your dahlias and this isn't always the case. So you'd only need to dig your dahlias if either your ground gets really cold during the winter or it's a heavy clay soil like mine and you have a lot of rain. Because what dahlias don't like is either sitting in really wet ground over the winter or freezing or both. So if you live in a warmer climate or your soil is quite free, soil is quite free draining, then you don't need to dig your dahlias. If you do dig your dahlias, there are many different methods of storing them. But what I'm going to show you is the method that I use here in the UK in a zone that's equivalent to an 8A. I'm also going to talk a bit about whether you should wash your dahlias or not wash your dahlias and why I choose to wash my dahlias. You're probably also wondering whether I'm going to cover dividing dahlias in this video. And whilst I'm not going to cover it in detail, I do have a video about dividing dahlias that goes into loads of depth and I will link that in the description below if you'd like to see that. I really hope you find this video interesting and useful and if you enjoy it then please do give it a like because it really helps my channel and um, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. So each of our dahlias in the flower beds has got um, like a little plastic stake next to it so we know what it's called but I find that when we're washing and storing the dahlias those little plastic flags can um, become detached from the tuber. Like there's no easy way to attach the plastic tag to the tuber. In the past, I've used some long labels um, that are also made of plastic and they, they kind of slip off the tubers really easily. So I've seen people using flagging tape and that is what I'm going to use today. Before I dig anything up, I'm just going to chop off um, the, the leafy growth on the top. So we haven't really had a very hard frost yet, but it's definitely time to dig them and I need to take the opportunity um, whilst it's not raining because we seem to be having a lot of rain at the moment. It's raining pretty much every day. It's really awful digging dahlias in the rain, especially in our heavy clay soil. It's perfectly all right to wait for the first frost before you dig up your dahlias, but you absolutely don't have to. So long as they've been in the ground for 120 days, then it's okay to dig them up um, whenever you're ready. So I'm just going to take the support off. This is an annual that we don't need anymore. That can also go on the compost. I'm just going to clear an area so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm literally just um, writing honker rows on there and then I'll just tear off a length of it and wrap it around the tuber so that we don't lose the names because it's something that I do all the time and it's really annoying. And then I can just dig that up. So when you're digging your dahlia, make sure that you don't dig right next to the plant itself, like right next to the stems, because what will happen is you'll probably puncture um, some of the tubers. So you want to dig far away and then just sort of gently lever it out. So this is the tuber here and you can see that there's loads of soil around it and so you could leave this for a day or two and then just brush it off. Let's get rid of Mr. Worm. Um, or you could brush it off now um, or you can do what I'm going to do which is just rinse it off and then I'll cut these a bit shorter and stand them upside down in a crate. Um, to dry out because the stems are hollow and so water can get in there, sink to the bottom and start rotting your tuber. So if you stand them upside down in your crates to dry or wherever on the ground to dry then the water can drain out. Whilst there's mud and stuff in between my tubers um, it's easier to put this in but once I've rinsed it all off that's where these tags are really important.
you're probably trying to decide whether or not you want to wash your dahlias before you put them into storage and both are perfectly acceptable so to wash them or not to wash them the important thing to do is to make sure that your dahlias aren't soaking wet when you put them into storage so what I'm going to talk about is why I choose to wash my dahlias before I put them into storage the main reason that I do this is so that I can check them for things like gall because what I don't want to do is to store dahlias that have got any kind of gall so leafy gall or tuber gall or any kind of disease and I also want to check because if there are um, rotten tubers that you've dug up from the ground that you don't necessarily notice that one or two of them are rotten because they're covered in mud and um, then if you put them into storage your entire clump is going to rot so I like to be able to check over the dahlia tuber to, to take off the bits that are rotten. This is why I wash my dahlias now rather than storing them and that is because this one here has got gall and this is gall so where there's like this weird sort of growth here it's like a really weird growth pattern and the tube it doesn't look like this it just looks like something else so this is going in the dustbin i am not keeping this one so this is a daily tuber called vancouver and this is the stem here and this is kind of how much stem I would leave on it. But if you turn this one over, this tuber here has got a hole in it. And in fact, it's last year's tuber. So I would cut that off and not keep it. And the other thing is that on the bottom here, this is kind of rotten and soggy. And you don't want to put any of that into storage. So I cut off until it gets down to like you know, something solid and it's not rotten anymore. I cut off all the rotten bit. Like that. Because I don't want to put anything rotten into storage. Ugh. And in doing this, I have just realized that I have got some gall here. So I need to sterilize these secateurs and also bin this tuber. So the gall is this bit here that just looks, I don't know, just like it's got lots of little bumpy bits. It looks a little bit like cauliflower. I'm hoping that you can see that really clearly. So it just looks like a little cauliflower floret and that is gall. So again here is another tuber that's rotted in the ground during the summer. So I'm just going to take the rotten bit off because I don't want to keep that. And there, in fact, can you see there's another one here that's rotted? So I'm just, these are the mother tubers. So they're the ones that I planted. And I'm going to take the entire rotten bit out. So that one's fine now. I've cut all the rotten bits out. And so I'm just going to make sure that it is upside down to drain. So this is where all our dahlia tubers are just drying out. I've got them raised off the ground onto upside down plastic trays. Um, but as so long as they've got adequate ventilation and are in the dry, then they will dry out in a day or two. If it gets at all cold at night, so anywhere near like two degrees, we will use some horticultural fleece, fleece just to cover the crates um, so that the tubers don't freeze whilst they're drying out. And then, once they're dry, we're going to put them into storage and I'll show you how I do that. There are so many different ways to store dahlias. Everybody's got their own favourite method. I'm going to show you the method that I use. This is um, what I've discovered through trial and error works best for me in my environment. And that's the thing. So it depends where you live, how cold it gets, how damp your environment is, and which method is going to work best for you. Um, I live in what's equivalent to a zone 8A. It, we live in South Buckingham here in the UK it very rarely gets below minus seven but the other factor that we have to bear in mind is that it is very damp through the winter here in the UK particularly where I live uh, we get a lot of rain so I have found it best to make sure my dahlias are completely dry and that I store them in an environment that keeps them well insulated so the method that I use is I put my dahlias into crates with ventilation holes so they're vented 
Uh, some of them don't have ventilation on the bottom, but they're vented on all sides. Um, it, the bottom doesn't really matter so much, so long as there is ventilation. And I use wood shavings, which are a natural byproduct of the carpentry industry. So I feel that I'm being quite sustainable. And then once, once I finished with the wood shavings in the spring, when I take my dailies out of storage, um, I tend to use them as the brown material in my compost heaps. Now, the other method that can be used, um, you could use vermiculite. Um, I don't like using vermiculite because it's very expensive so it'd be quite hard for me to finance buying massive loads of vermiculite but also um, because vermiculite is created by heating to a very high temperature it's not particularly environmentally friendly. The other thing that I could use is dry compost and I have tried that in the past it did not work for me. Um, I feel like compost probably just absorbs too much moisture. I've also tried wrapping them in newspaper and um, that didn't work particularly well because they just weren't insulated well enough and in fact the mice got into them that year. Um, we weren't using plastic crates, we were using cardboard boxes and they just chewed through the cardboard boxes and then as I said they just weren't insulated well enough. The other thing that you can use is you could wrap your dahlia tubers in cling film or cling wrap or plastic wrap, whatever you call it. I don't do that, I've done it once. Um, and I think the only really proper way to do that is if you divide your dailies in the autumn and then you can wrap the tubers individually. Um, you can't really wrap them if they're still in a big clump. Also, um, for obvious reasons, I don't think the plastic wrap is an environmentally friendly way to um, store my dahlias over the winter. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to just cover the holes in the crate with a very thin layer of paper. This is just packing paper that's come with parcels. You could use newspaper or anything you like. And this is just to stop all the um, wood shavings falling out. So then what I like to do is put a nice thick layer, about an inch, maybe a bit more, um, on the bottom of the crate just because then the bottom is properly insulated and it's a nice bed for my dahlias to rest in. Now in the past I've put each of my dahlia tubers into a plastic bag um, in order to keep the tags with the tuber but this year I'm trying a new method and I've actually tied a piece of this tape around each tuber and, um, and labelled it and that way um, hopefully I'll always know what the tuber is, whether this tag gets lost or not. So I'm just going to make sure that each one is labelled and I will just lay my dahlias out like this, trying to make sure they don't really touch because if then if one rots, that will rot another one. So once I've kind of done a layer like that, I'm then going to put some more sawdust on top. So once you've got another pretty good layer of wood shavings on there, then you can um, just put some more tubers on top. So with some of my tubers, I haven't bothered cutting these off, um, the little roots, and some of them I have, and it really makes absolutely no difference at all. Um, these are no good to you in the end, so you can chop them off if you want. Um, I think I just probably got bored and didn't bother chopping those bits off. And then as you can see, I've just filled the rest of the crate up with wood shavings and then these crates will be stacked one on top of the other. I'm not going to bother putting a cover on, there's just no need. Um, so these are all pretty well insulated, they're nice and dry and snug and this is how I'm going to store them for the winter. now and this is where we store our dahlias through the winter. So this room is quite large, it's got a window um, but the walls are double thickness brick so it never really gets below freezing but just in case it gets a bit chilly during the winter months we do use these woolen blankets and we just put them over the crates like this um, just in case they need a little bit of extra warmth. So it's just, you know, you could use anything. You could use an old towel or something like that, or, you know, old bed sheets. We use old bed sheets to cover other things. So 
just you know make use of whatever rags you've got just to give them a little bit of extra warmth if it gets near freezing um, or below but it shouldn't get below in this part of the property it's attached to our house so there is some warmth coming through and this is where I keep them and then I will check on them once a month so I'll check on them probably um, in December January and February until I take them out of storage and just to make sure you know I'll just dig around in the sawdust and have a look at the tubers and make sure they're not rotting if they're rotting I'll take them out I have made a previous video about that and you can find it on my channel but I'll put a link in the description below in case you want to have a look about how to check your dahlias during storage anyway I really hope you found this video interesting and useful if you've got any questions at all then put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you and um, I just want to say thank you very much for watching I'll see you all next time